Hi guys, Walter here for Demand the Truth. I'm here in front of the United Nations. I'm going to give you a brief rundown of the United Nations. First and foremost, the United Nations is actually technically sovereign soil and is not part of the United States whatsoever. They have their own police officers, their own fire department, they even have their own stamps. So they're completely autonomous, separate, kind of like the Vatican, kind of like Washington DC, kind of like the inner city of London. They're cities within cities. And this is interesting. Now everybody thinks that the United Nations was created to stop war. And that's a lie. And I'll tell you why that is a lie. Because if you read the books Tragedy and Hope in Anglo-American Establishment, which I have, and they're written by Carol Quigley, a uh, Harvard-trained Georgetown professor who was Bill Clinton's mentor by no stretch of the imagination a conspiracy theorist, he will go through, he reproduces the original documents, the wills, the writings, and so forth, of people like the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, and Cecil Rhodes. These groups are on record in the Anglo-American establishment finance both sides of World War I. And people say, oh, Will, you're crazy. Nobody wants a one-world government. Well, actually, Woodrow Wilson wanted exactly that. Woodrow Wilson, the racist, who I was talking about the other day, who showed Birth of a Nation at the White House, a KKK movie. So Woodrow Wilson's dream, along with his handler, Colonel Edward Mandel House, the Rockache Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, uh, and Cecil Rhodes, their plan was to finance, which they did, both sides of World War I to create a League of Nations. After World War I, the United States felt that a League of Nations would be a threat to its sovereignty, so the Senate did not allow it to happen. And it is a threat to our sovereignty because you can't have um, dictators, communists, fascists, and kings and queens and think, throw them together and think that you're going to get democracy because you're not. Now, this land right here that you're seeing was donated by John D. Rockefeller. Remember when I told you everything in the world is controlled by the Rockefellers? The American Medical Association, the American Psychological Association, the American Psychiatric Association, the National Education Administration was financed by them. Everything. Literally, I defy anybody to find something that the Rockefellers are not in. So this land, which is not U.S. land, was given to us by the Rockefellers. The first Secretary General of the United Nations was a guy named Alger Hiss, who was a Soviet spy. So they financed both sides of World War I in order to get a League of Nations. And the U.S. was like, no, that's... That's not a great idea. We're not going to put dictators and kings and queens and fascists together and think we're going to get uh, freedom out of that. And the original representatives of the League of Nations were all members of this roundtable group, on record. So then they said, hey, why don't we finance both sides of World War II on record and see if we can try another world government uh, proposition. And that's exactly what happened. This, was, this, this United Nations and the plan for World War II was completely co concocted illegally with FDR and members of administration meeting with members of the Council on Foreign Relations illegally, unrepresented, unelected, together in the White House to post to, to shape the war the war uh, the world that we were living in during World War II and the post World War. So a bunch of uh, a bunch of CFR people were creating it. And then Dave Rockefeller, we got the land from him and the whole idea of the United Nations it is the framework of, of go global governments. And as I said, the first Secretary General was a Soviet spy named Alger Hiss. And long story short, the entire idea of the United Nations was, we've been through war, two world wars, enough is enough, no more war. Well, the UN and the UN peacekeeper, pe uh, peacekeepers, they've, they've had war crimes, they've had sexual travesties. And since the United Nations was created, we've had more wars than before it was created. So what you're looking at right here is the framework for global government. This is what they're establishing, and this is what they want. And like I said, I may or may not have mentioned this earlier, but this building is also built to phi ratios, going to the other occult aspect. So people say they don't want a world government, uh, they don't want to do this, but this, the United Nations is, is already the fundamental structure for the world government. You got the United Nations, then you got the European Union, they wanted to build an American Union, they already have a, a some type of formative structure for an African Union and an Asian Union as well. So they want to centralize control so it's only the rich, racist, elite people to have that. Either way, guys, we need to get out of the United Nations. It's There's no sovereignty for America in there, and it's a bunch of elitists. And this was all created by Dave Rockefeller and his crony. So, for, like I said, at the Rockefeller, uh, you know, at Rockefeller Center, people think this is about skating and the Christmas tree and Christmas. No, it's, it's actually not. People think the United Nations is about peace. 
No, there's been more war, and the people involved in the United Nations are more nefarious than the regular er everyday character riffraff that you would see on the street over there. Either way, guys, thanks for tuning in. This is my second video I'm going to file for today, and God willing, I will see you guys tomorrow. God bless. Thank you.